Mike here. This evening before it gets dark, I want to do just a couple things. I want to go check a little food plot that Melissa and I planted. I'm trying to think when that was. I think it was September 27th, so a little over a month ago, and I haven't been back since. And then after that, I want to go look at that hillside that I mowed with the uh, John Deere 333G with that diamond mower. It was on a steep hill, and I just kind of seeded it down in some uh, winter rye. I want to see if that's popping at all. And then I got to thinking, if I'm going out there, I might as well collect a load of firewood on the way and on the way back. I have a bunch of little trees laying along the sides of the trails from when I made the new trails. And plus, we had a whole bunch of heavy wind last week, and I really haven't been out there since, so I kind of want to see what's going on. So then I was thinking, you know, if I'm going to go cut some firewood, I was all ready to grab the uh, MS-261, and I thought, I have an idea. I'll show you. So the other day I was watching one of Wrangler Star's videos and he did a video trying to determine which would last longer, a battery powered chainsaw, you know, with one battery versus a gas powered chainsaw. And I think the gas powered saw was an MS-261, it's a great firewood saw, and the, the battery powered one was a DeWalt, I'm not real familiar with it, it was pretty good size though for a battery powered saw. And the way it worked out, I think he got three times the amount of cuts with the, with the, yeah, with the MS-261. So I was all prepared to grab the 261, and I thought, you know what, we're going to try this little thing out. This is a uh, MSA-161T. Now, this is not a firewood saw. This is like an arborist saw for a guy climbing in a tree or pruning. But don't let its uh, little size deceive you. It's a screamer. It really is. So I have a bunch of, uh, you know, little firewood poles, limbs and stuff laying out there. And what I want to do is see if I can fill up the Ranger on one battery with this. And I think in a little bit, Melissa's going to come help me out. She just got home. Want to come say hi? Hi. Well, here's Melissa's going to come over. I think it's a great turkey carver. She thinks it's a great turkey carver, but it is light. I mean, and I tell you what, once I started these videos and got the opportunity to start using some of this battery equipment, my, my eyes were open. Never in a million years would I have considered it. Now, if you're going to go out and cut wood all day, you know, I don't think there's any replacement for like that MS-261, it's a great saw, or the 462. But these things really do have their place. They do. And I think something like this, even though it's for like a climber or something like that, I think it's be a great little saw to keep in your side-by-side -side or on your tractor. You've got little trees down across the trail or anything like that. In your man bag. In your man bag, the big tool rack. Or you can maybe cut a load of firewood with it. We're going to find out tonight. Do you think we'll fill the whole ranger up with this? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I do. I don't know. It holds quite a bit of wood. No, I think so. So what I'm going to do first... I, I think we can all agree that the history of the battery has come a long way. It definitely has. <laughs> it has come a long way. You remember when we were like young... Cell phones have really put that into the 21st century. You know what has really that. come a long way are flashlights. Yeah? You remember when we were young, and I know most of you are about the same age as I am. This big brown. The, you know, the only good flashlight you could really get took those six volt lantern batteries. You know what I mean? And oh, that kind, yeah. Oh, if you went hunting and you had one of those, you, just, you were top dog. You really mm -hmm. were. Big old thing. And now you can get like a little, you know, light like this, an LED, last 20 times longer and it's 100 times brighter. brighter yeah. But it is amazing how far that technology has come. Yeah. But anyway, it's going to get dark. I'm going to go check that little food plot that we planted a month yeah. ago. Yeah. Check that hillside. And then if you, you want to come out in a little bit, I'll be out there kind of near the scenic overlook or where I was trying to get that cherry log yeah. out the other okay. day. Sure. I'll see you out there in a bit. All right. So far this fall, we lost all the leaves on the uh, cherries and the maple. That's what order it usually happens. But the uh, oaks, they'll hold on for a while. Won't be long. You got to be careful this time of year because... Uh, I think it was last year we had an ice storm and uh, a lot of the oaks still had their leaves on them and it really tore a lot of trees up it did but anyway we're gonna head out there to that uh, scenic overlook area first and we'll check out see if that winter rise coming up at all and we had some real heavy rains I just want to see if anything's eroding or anything like that but it's a pretty nice evening it really is it's uh it's gonna get cold tomorrow though they're calling for rain in the morning and then uh, some snow in the afternoon. Mini cabin. It's over that way. This weekend, I promise. I'm actually off on Friday. Friday morning, we have to get down to Pittsburgh. But Friday afternoon and Saturday, I'll be working on that. I gotta get that finished.
this is the uh, scenic overlook here. If I can find a clip from a couple weeks ago, this is that area that I mowed with the uh, John Deere 333G and that diamond mower. It was all that multiflora rose and autumn olive, and it was thick, nasty. So what I did, I just kind of mowed this one little section off. Down below there, it's real nice and thick, though, still for the deer. And then to give you some idea where we're at, you remember the uh, me trying to recover that nice cherry tree? That's over on that hillside over there. And I was trying to come in from up at top, which, by the way, there's still two logs laying over there. But I'll get to them, along with everything else. Not seeing anything coming up yet in here. I can tell the turkeys have been in here. That's probably what I did is fed the turkeys. Yeah, nothing growing yet, but uh, no erosion, which is good. So uh, we're going to head down over the hill and check that little food plot next. Not bad, this is the only thing I've found so far across the trail. It didn't much. Oh yeah. Can you see that green over there? That's that little food plot. We'll go check it out. Walk over there and check it out. It looks great though from here. Now this little food plot here, this is nothing more than ryegrass. And I have read numerous articles saying that deer won't eat ryegrass, but I have seen numerous deer eating ryegrass. Around here it seems, you know, whatever stays green into the winter, they eat. And usually this works out pretty good each fall. Yeah, that came in really nice. All I did was till this up and seed it. I didn't hit it with a call to pack or anything. I knew we had rain coming and uh, it worked out really well. The timing was good. But anyway, we're going to head back up on the hill and we'll cut some wood with the uh, little steel 161T. We'll tear into this little maple here. Actually, it's a little bigger than what I remember, but uh, there's definitely enough in here to get one load in a ranger. The chaps are nice for all these briars. Great vines.
Hey. Hey. Guy says up to this baby up to 12 miles an hour on the way out here. 12 miles an hour on the way out. Straighted it. Traded it straight up. Straight up. Okay. I'm kind of down in here a little bit. Just when I think you can't do anything else, you go and totally redeem yourself. Remember that movie? What movie is that from, everyone? One of my favorites. Hey, uh, I'm thinking, if you want to stomp down some of that brush, I'll throw this stuff up to there, and then you can load it in the Ranger. Hey, do you want to uh, take a minute while I'm sawing to explain how you like helping with firewood and the whole lift thing and all that stuff, lifting and carrying wood? Yeah, well, it's simple. I, I tried to explain this to a few people on some comments and some videos over the past but yeah, Mike's really good at running the splitter. He knows the controls and I'm not that familiar. It's not that I can't learn it, I have learned it, but I also don't feel confident with the safety issues of I have to turn and look, which one am I doing? She doesn't want to and, chop um, anyone's fingers off when we're trying to like see how fast we can split a load of wood, a quart of wood or yeah, something. Yeah, which, which makes sense. You know, here's the thing. We did that to see if we could beat the sun going down and we did and that's pretty exciting. So, if you don't know what we're talking about, a lot of people, they'll say oh, all kind of stuff. They're why like, is it Mike lifting? Let Melissa run the splitter. And that's fine. I appreciate it. It's that whole, um, I don't know what their intention is. I think just most of them start off by being kind, but some of them are like, hey, don't see you doing that. And he does plenty of it. But um, in that situation of trying to find out what the time is and can we do it before the sun goes down, I'm confident in, uh, that I'm faster to get to be the loading, r loading the rounds and he runs the splitter. It works out great. I'm happy about that. And I like what we do. We work well together as a team and I like being able to move like that. You know, I threw in the idea that, hey, I'm turning 50 in a few months. So everyone get ready. Keep your calendars open for January 19th is a Sunday. That's my birthday, but I'm sure the party will be in like maybe January 18th. Well, you got so, it all down, don't you? I know. I'm, I'm getting it all planned. But I really do. I think uh, I think we, we work well together. And um, I'm happy with the way we have our system, the, the team. We have a we good do. system, Melissa. We do. Oh, as, as he hits me with a round. See? That's why I'm the one usually throwing and loading. I wouldn't put the tailgate down. They'll just slide out. Oh, uh, yeah. What am I thinking? So steep. Yeah. See, he's the brains of the operation. <laughs> All right. And start loading from the back. Part. Yeah. Okay. That little thing's impressive. It is. How's it running? It's running good. Yeah? Do you feel, um... What's your idea? Do you feel like it's... I mean, it's definitely not as fast as like that 261. Oh, right, right. But it is super light. It's pretty handy. What's that game called? You throw. Yeah, what is that called? Throw a ball. <laughs> Knock out the other guy's ball. I don't know. I don't think a battery's going to last the whole load. I don't. I think if we were cutting smaller stuff, maybe. But this stuff's pretty good size. See what I'm saying? That's a 12 inch bar on this. Pretty good sized maple. It's funny when you come out here and you see this. I remember this tree being here. I had in my head it was like six inches in diameter. It's actually much bigger.
If it wasn't so wet, I would have uh, cut this off, brought a tractor down here, pulled this thing up. But yeah, okay. It's pretty wet. Yeah, and some, I need new winter gloves. There's some uh, work gloves in the ranger, by the way. Or vice versa. I need gloves that can work and keep me warm, my hands on. Yeah. So, we got a pretty decent load. We can actually fit a few more pieces in there. It's getting dark. It's kind of like dessert, you know? There's always room for some dessert. Yeah, there is. How much uh, is left in the battery? One. One bar left. So you can definitely, nice. absolutely cut a full load. Yeah. And, and some, sharpen your pencil and carve your turkey. Yeah. And some Monday. of that maple right there it was like 10, 11 inch stuff, pretty big. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely not as fast as the MS-261, but it is a pretty handy little saw. And that's not even, I was explaining to them earlier, that's like for climbers and arborists, for pruning Trim, and, yeah. and things like that. I get that. Which battery's in that? I have a couple different batteries. What does that say on there? Uh, the AP300S. AP300S battery. Yep. Okay, and the steel 161T. That is impressive. That really is. That's a lot yeah. of firewood right there. And we still have a little bit of battery left. And remember, when I started this video, I used it a little bit, cut some grapevines, and uh, kind of clearing a path to get out in there. So, yeah. Yeah. But I'm using Melissa's phone for a little bit of light on her, but uh, we're going to wrap this video up. But that does answer the question. Yes, you can definitely cut a load of firewood at least in that side by side right there with the I thought you could 161T and the 300 what do you say it was APS Yeah APS battery All right APS battery well, We better so, wrap this up before you All right So if you like these videos click like subscribe comment down below we'd love to hear from you and share them with your friends See you on the next one